Today in SnowRunner, we are going to be taking a look at this, which is a brand new, fully console-friendly international that has the ability to be upgraded and modified, or I should say upfitted in this case, into a wilderness fire truck, which works very, very well with the Ontario DLC, although you can use it in really any scenario you want, but it's especially well-suited to the firefighting scenarios. Now, this is the way the truck is first presented to you when you grab it out of the dealership. It's basically a bare frame, but the wheel and tire package is already there and good to go. The cab is good to go and everything else is there basically completely, you know, clean slate, um, ready to be built by you. So let's fire it up, get it into the garage and see what this thing is all about. And by the way, this interior looks amazing as well. I love how the stereo has Apple CarPlay. Yo, the shifter moves. Hold on. When you shut it down, the shifter shakes. And then when you fire it back up again, watch this. That's so cool. That's such a sick detail. Does it also move when you rev it? It does. That's so sick. I know that that might seem really small to some people, but like for someone like me that really appreciates like tiny little details like that, that is huge. I absolutely love that the creator of this mod went the extra mile for that. Because they very easily could have just said, nah, we're not going to bother with that. But they didn't. They actually did it, and that is amazing. So, let's see. Now, our base engine is going to be 520 foot-pounds of torque with 300 horsepower. Then we can go up to 800 and 450. Then 1200 and 600, which gets into sort of the OP engines. And then another OP engine, which they don't even designate a power figure for this one. They just say... Say OP. So what we'll do is we will start off with the 800 and 450 and then we'll switch over to one of the OP engines a little bit later when we go to do something crazy like, for example, the bridge jump. Now, gearbox-wise, we got off-road, balanced, and upgraded. We're going to start off with off-road, I think. Suspension-wise, we got soft and we have firm. Firm, I would really only ever use for towing or hauling and then soft, I would use for everything else. Now, tires-wise, you mostly have 50s. 50s seem to be about the standard size for this truck, although you can also go for a set of the 46-inch Tega tires if you want to do that, although I'm not going to be doing that. Those look okay, but the tire options for this truck in particular look a lot better, in my opinion. And as a matter of fact, these, the TCM boggers, look insane. Now, if you want to take this thing on some icy and snowy adventures, you do have the option of spiked or chained tires at your disposal as well. Now, winch-wise, we have a light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty, which is considered the OP winch. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on there because I'm not really too bothered about uh, winch balance. And then, spare wheels-wise, we have one that sits right there off of the frame. I'm sure that will be useful at some point. Snorkels-wise, we have two options, and they're pretty similar to each other. This one has a little enclosure for the air filter. This one does not, um, although it seems as though... They sit at about the same height, so really, it's entirely up to which one you aesthetically prefer. I prefer this one. Um, I The other one's okay, but it all comes down to what you prefer. Now, this is where the customization gets really in-depth. So you can do a single cab. You can do a crew cab, which I think on a, like, a class of truck like this, a commercial tr uh, truck chassis, the crew cab ones look really, really good. Now, we have a small sideboard. We have a small flatbed, and those are vanilla add-ons, but they've been moved. We have a box. We have a fuel tank. That one looks custom, actually. Um, we have a van body, which also looks custom. We have a medium log carrier, small log carrier, uh, the water tank, which that one turns it into a fire truck. Then we have a proprietary flatbed for this particular truck itself. Then we have a vanilla flatbed metal detector module that hangs off of the rear of the frame. Then we have the seismic vibrator module, and we also have a standard vanilla sideboard bed, more, aux let's see, more fuel capacity, auxiliary fuel tank. And then we have compatibility with the GGMS high and low trailer saddles. Then we also have the GGMS cargo bed, which again, these don't come with this truck. These come with a separate mod entirely. Uh, the mod of which I can't remember off the top of my head. These are Glitchworks add-ons, these towing bodies. You can basically put 
just about anything on here. I mean, you could really make it just about whatever you want. Tow truck, fire truck, recovery truck, dump truck. I mean, it's it's literally, the sky's the limit. It's all up to you. I really like how the flatbed looks. I think that looks great, but for the purposes of this um, build, we're gonna go with the fire truck. Now, let's see. We're already done frame add-ons wise. And now stickers wise, you can actually, oh, that's really cool. You can do like the, uh, the fire truck door stripes. Whoa. You can do like a whole fire rescue design on the side of the, um, like on the side of the water tank. That's wild. What about the other ones? Where is this one going? Is it on the rear or is it on top? Oh, that one's on top. Okay. And then on the doors, you have a couple of fire department specific stickers. What about, uh, hood, uh, let's see, sticker number six. That's on the hood. Okay. So we will do the fire rescue design on the side of the tank. And then I think that's going to be pretty much good. The door sticker is all right. I'm not like the biggest fan of the door sticker, but it's all up to you on which application you want to go with. We will definitely do the heavy duty bumper though. And miscellaneous wise, you can throw, dude. What? You could put coffee in the cup holder. That's so sick. A bug guard on the front. You could do a full cab cage if you want. Rear cab cage. Flasher bar up top. Visor. There's all sorts of stuff you can do to this thing. Now... I will probably leave it orange for this particular setup, but depending on how you want to build this thing, you really could set it up with whatever kind of color you want, depending on the type of build you're doing, and we will, of course, also have beans on the dash. Now, heading out with this thing for the very first time, keep in mind, we are on the softer suspension, so I really... I really am curious to see if that water tank makes this suspension bottom out real easy or if it's still able to kind of hold its own. Now do the fire... Yes, dude! The, the actual, like, fire truck beacons work and everything. The flashers are fully functional. That is so sick. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn them off now, though. And let's see what this thing is actually like off-road. Now, looking at this thing, I it's odd because I think this thing looks amazing. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. And when I saw this thing on Mod.io, I noticed there was like there were a couple of people in the Mod.io comments, which the Mod.io comments can be very harsh sometimes, but someone in the Mod.io comments was like, um, was like, this thing looks horrible, the textures are awful, the model is terrible. I'm like, what the heck? Have you looked at this thing? It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And plus, like, I think it's probably one of those things where they expected it to be, like, you know, covered in dirt and scratches and scrapes. And I think there are some people in the SnowRunner community that don't want to use a truck unless it's absolutely, like, it looks battered and beaten. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the occasional truck that looks like it just rolled off the dealer showroom floor, you know? Oh, I, I tried to shift it into high, and then I realized there was no high range in this gearbox. But we don't need it. Look at that. Well, until we high center ourselves. But up until that point, this thing had plenty of traction. Let's see if we can do... Let's see if we can hit that diagonally and actually make our way up. Because I think it's probably possible. We'll head on over to the left and then probably cut back right. Come on. Yep, that's it. That's the line. We are going to scrape the undercarriage just a little bit, but, I mean, hey, that's that's what's going to happen. When you take a truck this big and this long into an area like this, you're going to have scenarios like that. And I don't really think that, especially if you're using this thing on the Season 9 Ontario region or really any other region in the game, I don't really think you're going to be running into too many scenarios where the kind of breakover angle um, is going to be an issue. I think that's breakover angle, right? You know, the, the likelihood of it getting high centered, that, I think that's breakover angle, or I might be getting that entirely wrong. I don't know. Either way, this thing's ability to get over an obstacle, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, especially in a lot of the vanilla maps. Now, let's bring you back on down. The approach and departure angles are not terrible. I mean, we didn't scrape the front or rear coming down off of that hill, which is really impressive. Now, let's see how it does in some mud. Keep in mind, we are not on the top engine we are not using the uh, top end transmission either and this thing is shredding this is just in automatic mode now the lockers are always on but I believe all wheel drive is selectable and I will check that as soon as we get through this mud pit Drive on out the other side, and yes, all-wheel drive is selectable, but the diff lock is always on, which I think is a good choice for this truck, because a lot of trucks like this really only come out unless, you know, the actual 
like, task warrants them coming out, like, going out into the middle of nowhere, going through some muddy, rutted out, sometimes near impassable terrain to put out a forest fire. Like, that's literally what these trucks are designed to do. So, as far as, like, capabilities in the mud goes, this thing is really, really good. Now, let's make our way on over to the dips obstacle. Now, I think the dips obstacle will be fine, although I do think we may have, a, again, a little bit of an issue with the length of the wheelbase, because it is quite long, as you can see. It's very, very... Whoa! Easy! Don't mind me almost rolling over. I think we're going to try to do this, like, directly ahead. Let's see. Not too bad, as long as you... As long as you go over these with enough momentum, you'll be okay. The biggest issue is going to arise when you get it stuck in the center and you didn't have enough momentum to get the frame to slide. Because if you don't get the frame to slide, well, you really are doomed then. You're actually legit done and you're stuck and you need a buddy to come get you. Which, in our case, fortunately, we had enough momentum to not need that. Now, let's make our way on out of the dips obstacle. Go ahead and pull up the mobile repair shop. And gearbox three, engine four, and that is going to give us, that's going to give us a little bit more intense capability. Yeah, so now we're on the top engine and the eight-speed gearbox, and I can tell you already, right off the bat, uh, it's silly. It's insane. It's actually, oh my god. Like, if you put the power down in a corner... There's so much weight getting thrown around that it will near about tripod. Oh, up the inside. Wow, how does it have this much grip? I was not expecting it to have this much grip, like, either on pavement or dirt. I mean, on dirt, it kind of makes sense because of, you know, the tires it's running. But on pavement, it's, like, not sliding around all that bad at all, which is very impressive for basically anything in SnowRunner. All right, full send. Let gravity take it. Here we go. Come on. Full send. Oh, geez. A little front heavy and yoinked. All right. Well, that went interestingly. Ironically, with the weight of the water tank in the back, I didn't expect it to nosedive off the jump. I expected the water tank to weigh it down backwards, but apparently that wasn't the case. But if y'all enjoyed this look at this truck, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see y'all next time. Talk to y'all later.